Hi, this is Chad with Skull and Key in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, a couple weeks ago, I wrote a blog entry about um, why I think, as a developer, you should have your own toolbox of tools that you use um, on a regular basis. So I thought I'd follow that up with a short video and just um, give you one of the tools that, that I found helpful in, in the past and, and just walk through it and we could talk about looping and scripts and some fun stuff like that. So um, what this tool is, is it's um, a relative path generator. So what do I mean by that? Um, in FileMaker, you can often can get a relative path to a file that you need to do an import from. Um, and so the relative path portion of that will survive the moving of the files as long as uh, the path from your existing file to the file you're trying to import remains um, the same. So the places that, that I've used this in the past, um, oftentimes when we're developing a solution for somebody, uh, we'll create like a transporter file um, and give that to them as, as, a, as a piece of the project so that as they move forward and, they, and they're doing their own development in, in different things, that we build good habits for them to, to work in a test version of the file first and then when they roll that out they've got a tool in place to, to move their data over. So we've got a transporter file for, for doing things like that. And so having a, a tool like that, you know, it's important that we have a relative path so that we can say, okay, put your, your files here and put the, the new files here and the tool will just work as long as they're in relation to each other like that. And if you need to reset them out, there's tools for that as well. Um, another good place that, that this comes in handy is if you're building a vertical solution for somebody where they need to roll out updates to their clients and they need to move the data, again, kind of a transporter file mentality there, but you need to move the data over. So um, having that that structure in place is nice. So before we go too far about the tool, let's talk about how relative path works. Um, in Unix, the, the dot slash represents the same folder you're in. The dot dot slash, and maybe there's a better term for that, I always called it a dot dot slash. The dot dot slash um, represents the parent directory. And so what this is telling me is that from where I am now, wherever I did whenever I got this, um, this directory, you know, if I go up to my parent and then up to the parent and then up to the parent. So three steps up from where I am I can find a path to get to uh, food directory, sub food directory and then the file that I'm looking for. So let's look at that a little differently if we can. Um, pull up this window. So if we look at it like this, um, I've got two samples we're going to take a look at here in a second and the file that I'm wanting to import into lives here and the other file lives here and so the the system needs to jump up one two directories before it finds a common directory that both paths have in play have in common and then it needs to go back down to the other the other file so let's go see if we can look at that in real time so here I've got the from um, path and here I've got the path that's going to, and usually, you know, for this information, I'm just going to use the git, uh, git file path um, function. And for this one up here, either I've got that, that hard-coded, or maybe I'm using something like Scriptmaster plugin to, to grab that dynamically, or um, I, I've used a dozen different different plugins, Troyfile or um, FileFire, or different, different plugins that, that can do something like that, where you get a dialog and ask the user where the, the file is and stuff. But once you have the information, then we can run the script I'm going to show you that basically gets the relative path between the two of these and, and basically substitutes in your, your dot dot slash. Okay? So looking at these paths like this is painful to my eyes. Maybe you guys are used to this, but you know, I, I don't like seeing that. So in the script, what I do is I, I basically substitute those slashes out for uh, carriage returns, and I, I just look at them as a stack of, of values. And the script walks the stack back until it finds a common, and then it walks back down the stack to get the path. So before we look too deeply at this, let's take a look at some other examples of where um, files might be located at and, and kind of what uh, the relative path would be to each one of those. So we talked about this you know, scenario here, which is what we just did, um, you know, going back two spots and then, and then back down. Um, but what if we have you know, a directory that looks more like this, and we're going from this, this file, and we want to import from this, this example file over here. Um, the relative path is essentially going to back up one, two, three, four, five directories and then branch back down to this one. Okay? And so the directory to this would be dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash. Another example, subfolder, subfolder two, there's my file. 
Okay, or what if we look at one looks like this? I'm in this toolbox file, and I want to import um, from this path example file down here. In this case, I don't have to back up at all, right? I'm, I'm in a subfolder from my starting point, so there would be no dot dot slash at all here. It would just go straight to the fifth and sixth, and then your example file. Okay, so once you you understand kind of how the relative paths work, then it, it makes it easier to kind of get what we're doing here and and understand that it's doing the right thing. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the script and we'll just run that with script debugger on and kind of process it as we go. All right, so we'll start running it and then we'll use the data viewer here and kind of look at it as it goes. So in this first variable, this is where you would you know, have a plugin call or something or, or feed it um, the from uh, path. And so I'm just grabbing it from this field for simplicity right now. And um, I get the source stack there. Let's take a look at that variable. So that's essentially just doing a substitute and, and replacing out the slashes with, um, with carriage returns. And, and this is a, a time too where if you need to clean anything up, if you need to um, you know, fix something, it's a good time to do that. So I think in mine I'm doing a little cleaned path sort of process there where I'm taking out the file colon forward slash. So whatever you might might get, whatever your plugin returns. I know some plugins return things as, you know, colons instead of slashes. Some have forwards, some have backs. So depending on what uh, your, your source gets, you may have to do some cleanup there. All right. And then the current stack, um, we're grabbing that. I'm just using the, uh, the get file path there and grabbing my, my stack of, of uh, directories and so we can kind of look at what that looks like, right? And then earlier I, I kind of misspoke. I said that we would um, walk the stack back till we found a common one, but um, we could have you know, directories with the same name but different, different areas, right? So we can't just walk back and find the common one. We really need to start at the top and walk down and see how many they have the same which is what this looping process here does. So we just go through a loop and, and we figure out how many stacks do they have the same. So let's run that to our breakpoint. And here we've got, figured out we have seven stacks the same, seven, seven directories the same. You can call us whatever you want, but I kind of went with the whole stack mentality there. So I, I kept the naming the same there. And then this backup stacks, we figure out, you know, how many, um, how many directories do I need to go back until I get to that seventh directory where they're the same. And so we're just, you know, doing a value count here on my current stack, subtracting the, the stacks the same, and I figure out that I've got to go back two directories. And, and from this point, um, just to make my sub um, calculations a little easier, I build that IP into, a, um, into its own variable. So we'll run that through. And so I've got my, my path substitution that I'm going to be doing later with the dot dot slash. I know I need two of those. And then my source um, variable here is what we, we set. I've got a little case statement going on in case I need to do something different for uh, the operating system, Mac versus Windows and whatnot. In this case, for this, that would be the same. But um, you know, I do a little, a little substitution there for the file and the colon and, and uh, all the things that might go into it. And we get the source variable. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Is essentially what we, what we um, have done here in my field that I'm writing out so we can see it is the example. And that's really all there is to it. So let's go take a look at two things a little closer and we'll wrap this up. And the first one is the actual um, script. And, and again, my plan is that you would you would build this, you know, again, think through it and, and get it working the way you want it. Um, if you if you really want my copy, you know, send me an email or, or go to the, the blog entry and I think there's a place there to download a file. I'll put something up if, if people ask. Um, and then the other one is, you know, kind of how this is working um, just to show that you know, I'm branching it out based on the OS, which you don't have to do for this case, but you know, it's not it's not too scary. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to um, to call or email, uh, email preferably, um, at chad.adams at skeletonkey.com. Thanks so much.